Hey guys, awesome, welcome back. Beautiful head of hair here. Our friend Steven has joined us. Okay, we've just done a quick consultation. We're gonna be taking you guys through a very basic scissor cut today, all right? Now, in this consultation we had discussed, we're very happy with the length that's up top. What we're unhappy about is what we call this hockey hair throughout the back and sides, okay? As you can see, it's probably a grown out shape. We need to bring this back to something a little bit more clean, uh, a little bit more professional, but at the same time, we wanna leave it edgy and trendy, all right? We never want to make somebody feel like they're getting something that's not cool, all right? It's very unlikely someone's gonna sit in your chair and say, hey, give me something that's not popular or not trendy, okay? So like I said, I'll just spin them around here. You can see we have a great canvas, all right? But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing a lot of this weight and length in here and bring it a little closer to the head, okay? And the reason being, again, it's just feeling a little mullety, okay? Or that hockey hair uh, that people sometimes talk about, all right? And uh, again, we're just gonna go through and do a nice, beautiful, classic scissor haircut. All right, so let's get started. Okay guys, beautiful. We've got our model now shampooed. All right, obviously we did again, another scalp analysis, making sure that there's no lice, moles, imperfections in the scalp. Okay, that's again why we do our shampoos. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a classic scissor haircut um, and be working with what we call cross graduation. All right, and we'll be definitely working with some layering on the top, okay? Once again, the brunt of this work is gonna be with my scissors. I have my three or four clips. Okay, and then I'm obviously gonna be working with my cutting comb, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna map out our haircut again, all right, and we're gonna put in our sectioning, okay? Hang tight, let's go through it. So perfect, we've placed in our sectioning pattern. I'm just gonna turn Steve around here. As you guys can see, I'm working with a horseshoe, but I've actually dipped it down a little bit more to a point, okay? And the reason being is because we're gonna be doing a lot of scissor work throughout the sides and the back, okay? Now in saying this, you can see as I comb the hair back, all right, it's actually sitting quite nice if we were going for something mid-length, okay? So I wanna be very mindful of that, all right? It, it, it is good hair, but at the same time, I don't wanna go too short within these areas because it might stick out, okay? So again, just to reiterate, you know, we really wanna lose a lot of this hair in the back here and bring it into something a little bit tighter, okay? So I'm gonna be working with something called cross-graduation or I'm gonna be working on the diagonal. So if you're a beginner at home, I don't need you to worry so much about the technical aspect. I want you to follow me step by step how my fingers are, okay? Once we get the motions of just how my fingers are and we're combing the hair, we can really focus on the technical aspect, okay? So, perfect. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna start, let's just say in this section, behind the ear, okay? So we'll be working in throughout here first and then into the back, okay? So, like I said before, super important, we need to be grooming the hair in the direction that we're gonna be combing it, okay? So I'm gonna take my first section, I'm gonna tilt his head here, just away from me. I'm gonna take a nice horizontal section, as you can see, nice and clean. I'm gonna comb underneath this, all right? I'm gonna take that quite short, okay? My next section as well is gonna be quite horizontal, just to behind the ear. Again, I'm combing underneath, all right? Looking for that guide. Taking that quite short within the sideburn there, okay? All right, again, on the pier diagonal there, all right, nice clean section, combing underneath. Just looking for that guide, there it is right there. Taking that off, okay? Now, you can see my weight line is starting to build in throughout this area, okay? So what we're gonna be doing now is we're actually gonna be taking sections all the way down into the nape, okay? So again, I'm gonna groom the hair in the direction that I want it to go, but you'll see this next section is coming slightly behind the ear, okay? Nice and clean, taking my time, okay? If the section's not clean, I'm not gonna move on. All I want you to do is mimic this line following the head shape, okay? So from here to here, all I'm doing is holding my fingers on a diagonal, I'm pointing it towards something, uh, and you can, you can make a marker on your mirror uh, or in your bedroom, wherever it is you're cutting, okay? My fingers are always gonna be pointing there, okay? All right, I don't wanna be horizontal. If my fingers look like a gun, okay, I'm working on a horizontal axis, all right? If my fingers look like the L, that means I'm working on the vertical axis, okay? I need them to be pointed, all right? So let's move into our next section, okay? And this is gonna be the first section we're gonna comb over top, all right? I'm gonna find that guide, I'm gonna lift up, and I'm gonna cut. One, two, three, 
All right, and I'm gonna work the whole way. All right, I'm gonna follow that line the whole way to the bottom of the nape, all right? As you guys can see, I'm working extremely clean, all right? Always taking a little bit of my previous guide and I'm going right tight to the head. Okay, if in this area you're having trouble, move the client's head down. Okay, if you need to comb up to get that hair into your hands, even better. Okay, perfect, all right? Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna move each section, all right, into the previous section, all right? So, let's just say that that was one, two, three, four goes to three, five goes to four, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So once again, next section, combing all the way down, into the nape, okay? I'm leaving my finger here on vacation, okay? That's what I like to call it. This is staying on vacation, all right? This is what helps me separate the hair, all right? And I'm combing the rest down, all right? Okay, like I said, if the hair is groomed correctly, it should stay in place, all right? So once again, I'm just gonna comb straight down, use my scissors, lift up, there's that guide, and I'm just literally following the head shape. So if you just want to zoom in here, okay, if I comb, I lift up that hair and you can see the hair underneath, that is my guide, okay? If I don't see the guide, I don't cut hair. Okay, and just working all the way into the nape. Okay, next section, all the way to the top. Moving all the way down. Sorry? Okay, so once again, onto our next section, taking from the top, pushing that comb all the way into the nape, all the way to the other side. Okay, combing that all down. Okay, nice clean section. Okay, lifting up, looking for that hair. Beautiful. Okay, as you guys can see, I'm taking my time. I'm not, I'm not rushing, all right? I'm not, I'm working with conviction, all right, and confidence, all right? Because at the end of the day, I wanna be giving this person the best haircut of their life, okay? There we go again, nice clean section, combing that down. And you'll notice as you get more confident, more fluent, you won't necessarily have to look for the guide because you'll just know exactly where it is because you'll be able to see it. And I'm just working a little bit more salon speed right now. And as you can see, I'm crossing right over into the other side of the head. Okay, and that's why we call it cross graduation because we're coming from here all the way to the other side of the nape, okay? Yeah, yeah. So as you can see, all right, we're crossing all the way into the other side of the nape. That's why we call it cross graduation, okay? Because we're graduating, but we're crossing over into the other side, okay? Like I said, what we do on one side, we're gonna do on the other as well, okay? So again, I'm gonna slow this down. Here we go, nice clean section, all the way into the nape. Okay, just gonna comb that out of the way, all right? Nice groomed section. I'm going to now pick up the hair. I'm gonna comb it out, place my comb in my hand. I'm gonna lift up, there's my guide. Tilt that head forward. Okay, and what we'll see, and I'll just show you, is we'll have a very nice weight line building up in this area. But the hair is still long enough, if you can see, that we can push it back, okay? But at the same time, it's much shorter throughout the nape. 
okay? And that's what we want to achieve. Enough length that we can push back on the top, but it's short enough in the nape that it's not feeling like the hockey hair anymore, okay? So we're gonna continue working on those sections. Okay, tilting the client's head forward. Okay, and as you can see, I'm gonna cross right over just past where the triangle is of my section, okay? Okay, as you can see, I'm actually gonna cross probably about another two sections almost to just past the point of the top of the head, okay? Beautiful. Another nice clean section all the way to the other side, combing that hair over. Beautiful. Okay, I might take one last section in here just for good measure. Let's just to see if, as I over direct it over, there might not be too much coming off, just a little bit here and there. Okay, because again, I'm over directing once I got to the round of the head because I want to retain some length. Okay, and I don't want to be taking too much off. Mainly the bulk was in these areas here. Okay, all right, so as I comb there, that's sitting beautifully, okay? So that's side one complete, all right? Like I said, what we do on one side, we have to do on the other, and guess what's happening? While I'm cutting this, this is starting to dry, okay? So that means the hair bond, okay, the elasticity is not the same. So I have to go back, spray it with water, and make sure we have moisture control, okay? So again, guys, we can't forget, as you can see, we've been cutting. It's really important to clean off our guest, okay? Always be working clean. They're gonna appreciate that on the business side, okay? And as you can see, we've wet down this next side, all right? But here's something that we need to talk about and a lot of people address inside the academy. How do we match this length to this length, okay? Because we can't follow our guide the whole way around, okay? We need to be able to match this length to the other side. Right? So there's a couple ways we can do this, all right? And I'm gonna show you how I do it, all right? I look at the client and I'll take a profile look, all right? And I will look and I will comb the hair out and I will see where it's sitting on features on the head. Whether the length was at the eyebrow, the eyeball, the cheekbone, maybe the nose, the upper lip or bottom lip or chin. That's what we need to use as markers on the face, okay? That's called vision crafting, all right? It's a, as well as helping me decide, okay, where I should be placing in my guide. Another way we can do it is you can actually measure on your comb, okay? And you can pull the hair out and see where it's measuring on your comb, but that's not a guarantee to me, okay? I feel if you're working as a professional, using features on the face are gonna be a lot easier for you to find your guides. Okay, so at the end of the day, we don't wanna guesstimate, we wanna be accurate, okay? So like I said, I can see where I started my guide here, all right, I'm somewhere about the top of the eyebrow, okay? So I'm gonna spin Steven around, okay? And now I'm gonna work on the opposite side, okay? So here's where things get very, very interesting, all right? On the right side, because I'm right-handed, I was working on the diagonal with my fingers pointing up. Okay, but the reality is, is I won't be able to get this same beautiful scissor work if I have my fingers in this position on this side. 
as you can see, it would not be easy to get that shape. So I have to change my finger position to pointing down. So now I'm pointing to the floor, okay? So we have to be very mindful of that. If you're cutting with your finger still pointing up, you're not gonna get the same results, okay? All right, so again, we're starting with a nice clean section. All right, I actually wanna wet that down a little bit more. Just as we're talking there, you can see that the hair is drying and these are the things that we really need to be paying attention to. So again, need to make sure that hair is nice and moist and we're grooming it in the direction it wants to go. And I'm just going to literally do exactly what I did on the other side. Nice clean little section to start. Okay, getting in there nice and tight. This section's a little bit more horizontal just because I want to get that weight off. Okay, next section just to behind the ear there. Okay, combing underneath. Looking for that guide, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to my next section. Hair is groomed nicely all the way into the back. Okay, nice and clean. Taking my time, not rushing, okay? So this will be my last section I'm gonna comb underneath. I'm gonna look for that guide. There it is right there. My finger's on the diagonal. Beautiful. Okay, now this side is always harder when your fingers are pointed to the ground. And the reason being is because we're fighting gravity. All right, at the end of the day, the hair naturally wants to fall out of your fingers, where on the other side, it was more likely that the hair was sitting in the holster of your fingers, okay? Okay, beautiful, all right? So again, we're just gonna follow the exact same system, all right? Nice clean sections, all the way into the back. Okay, working from the front all the way to the back. Okay, this is where I'm gonna start to comb on top. Just gonna section this little piece out here. I'm gonna leave that for the fringe. Okay, so I'm gonna reestablish that section. Okay, same thing, same as the other side. Fingers are pointing to the ground, taking that length off. Okay, as you can see, I'm still following that line perpendicular. Okay, and if I have to lean on and get into that position, okay, spinning the chair, I will. Okay, tilt his head forward if it's trouble for me to get into the back there. Okay, beautiful, starting to put that graduated shape in. All right, so all the way down into the other side, nice clean section. Okay, beautiful. You might notice as you get over here that the hair is shorter, but that's because you've already cut it on the opposite side, right? Okay.
tilt his head forward here. Probably the last couple sections. There's not too much coming off. Nope, sitting pretty nicely. Okay, so I always like to be very honest with people. You always have a side that's easier. Because I'm right-handed, obviously the right side's a much easier side to cut, okay? But working on the left side, I actually pay more attention to it, and the reason being is because it is usually more, my more challenging side, okay? So if you have to go through and refine a couple things, it's totally fine. Perfect, so we've gone through, worked our cross graduation throughout the sides. Obviously we can see a big difference from side to side now and definitely less length throughout the back, okay? So during our consultation we had discovered we're actually quite happy with the length on top, okay? The only thing that's disconnected right now is the top to the sides, okay? So what I would do in this instance is I'm actually gonna leave the top and potentially cut that uh, dry, okay? All I wanna do now is find the natural part, which seems to be somewhere around here, okay? Right, I'm just gonna comb that side to side. And I'm just gonna really connect this haircut in classically. Okay, because if you zoom in, you can see we have quite a little bit of disconnection to the sides, all right? But what I can also see is I actually like the length in the front. So I'm just going to separate the front, like so. Okay, a little bit of triangular section in the front. Okay, and I match that on this side as well. And I'm just going to clip this hair away. And the reason being is I like that little bit of disconnection. Use one of my clips here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to comb this out of the way because I like where that is at the recession, and we're just gonna leave that hair like so, okay? So we're at the natural parting, we have a tiny little bit of disconnection, okay? And I don't mind that that's disconnected, all right? Because I want that length up front, I feel if we go too short, it's not gonna be suitable, okay? So, here we go. As I comb out, we're gonna do the exact same sectioning pattern. You will see, from my previous guideline, I have a little bit of overhang. Okay, or a little bit of disconnection. All we're gonna do is connect that, all right? And we're gonna work on the diagonal. Okay, once again, there's my cutting line, and connect that, all right? And we're gonna connect that all the way to the back. And you'll see there probably won't be too much as we get further to the back coming off. Just a little bit there. Beautiful. Hardly any coming off there. Okay, so now that is technically connected to the sides. Okay, what we do on one side, we're gonna do to the other. Just spin Steven around here. Okay, once again, take a nice clean section. Boom, there's my cutting line, there's that disconnection. Just connecting that in. Okay, next section, combing that down. Just looking for that little bit of disconnection. Connecting that in to that cutting line, okay? Same thing. Our section's not clean, let's get it cleaner. There's hardly any coming off because again, we're happy with that length. Okay, let's just see here, minimal. Okay, and you'll see as you get more confident, you'll be able to gauge and you'll be able to see how the hair is already sitting, okay? So what we're gonna do now, all right, so we're happy, all right, we're gonna leave this disconnected. We're just gonna go through and do a beautiful blow dry and we'll do some fine detailing and personalization. Cool, so the hair is obviously wet. I've left this section out. We're gonna go in and do our blow dry now, okay? So what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the Techniart Transforming Cream, okay? This is an amazing cream. It also protects the hair from the heat, but it has enough hold in there, all right, that's gonna give me a really beautiful blow dry. And again, I'm only really using that much, okay? I don't need to use a lot. It smells great, and I wanna put it in the hair wet, 
okay? So I get enough coverage, all right? Now again, a big thing is we don't want to cake the product on the hair, all right? The reality is at the end of the day, all right, we wanted to use just enough to get it on the hair, but we don't want to make the hair greasy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've applied our product, all right, we're going to go in with our blow dryer and our concentrator, okay? All right, or our nozzle. The reason we call it our concentrator is it's concentrating the air on the area that we want. We're also going to be using our vent brush, all right? And just to explain, our vent brush has holes in it, so it actually guides air through the holes and helps us style the hair a little bit better, okay? Now, like I said in the previous haircut videos, wherever we start cutting, and I started on the right side today, is where I'm gonna be blow drying, because it's ergonomic, it's smart, it helps us work faster, all right, because we already know that this hair is starting to dry while this is starting uh, to currently dry, okay? So again, we're gonna start here with our blow dry, and we'll take you through, okay? So as you can see, if this side is dry, I move over to the opposite side and I'll start to dry the adjacent side. Now as you can see, as you can see, I'm ambidextrous, okay? I can use both sides with my brush because it's not ergonomic for me to stand this way and it's probably less comfortable. Although I can do it, it doesn't give me the ability to dry, okay? So I like to be able to work with both my dryer and brush on either side, okay? So again, we're working on high speed, medium heat. We don't want to burn the hair, okay? And at the same time, we don't want to burn the client, all right? So I've dried this side, now I'm going to work to the back. Now, beautiful, the back is now dry, the sides are dry, we're gonna work to the front, okay? I am gonna change up my drying tool in a minute, okay? I'm gonna use my vent brush, but when I get to the front, I'm gonna switch to my round brush, okay? Because I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, volume in there to accent uh, the haircut, okay? So again, we're gonna be focusing on the front, all right? All I'm going to do is start sectioning out the hair with my brush, and I'm gonna leaf it. Okay, always pointing the air down in the direction that I want my air to be going and the style of the hair. Okay, and again, just leafing it. Okay, and how this works is I'm actually scooping the hair, bringing it back, and sliding it out. 
okay? So it actually goes in, it comes back, and it scoops out, all right? That's why you can see that this is beveled a little bit, okay? Okay, again, you can see that the direction of the air is always going in the direction of the haircut. I'm not blow drying the hair forward right now because this is not a forward style, okay? I wanna be blow drying the hair backwards, all right? Okay, so just for some finishing, all right, I'm gonna move over to my round brush, all right? I'll probably do a little bit more uh, personalizing and cutting, but just to get my round brush in there, I'm just gonna tilt the client's head down, okay? And that section that I left disconnected, okay? I'm just gonna take some pinky sections, all right? I'm gonna grab that round brush, I'm gonna move that hair. Okay, and I'm just going to dry that hair. Okay, so one big trick, I'm just gonna reduce the heat now, okay? I'm gonna go to my cold shot, all right? And I'm just gonna hit the air with some cold air because that's gonna close the cuticle, all right? And it's gonna help with my styling. All right, and we're done our blow dry. Great, so we finished our blow dry and you can see, wow, what a transformation, it's looking great, okay? That cross graduation and throughout the back definitely removed that bulk, okay? But we have enough of a structure in throughout the sides, okay, that's holding up the roof, okay? Again, like I said, we're very structural while we, while we make our haircuts, okay? Or while we are, are uh, uh, working with the hair. So again, my, my biggest focus is now is I know that I've put in blunt cutting lines, okay? As we were cutting, we were putting in what's called club cutting lines. What we wanna do now is we wanna go and texturize or what we call personalize, okay? Sometimes people get freaked out by the word texturize and that's because we go in with these scissors, okay? These alligator looking uh, chompers. All right, the reality is is that this is a great tool if it used effectively, but we don't wanna be going on the inside and, and, and shattering our shape, okay? So that's why sometimes people get nervous saying, hey, don't use those texturizers or those thinners, right? This client's hair is already thin. It's a, it's a thinner strand of hair, so if we were going to thin it, it would be redundant, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna go back through with our scissors and we're gonna show you how we're gonna do some texturizing methods. So like I said, we're gonna go through and personalize. I can see a couple cutting lines in there that I'm just gonna work on, all right? I'm gonna hold that section. I'm gonna use my scissor, okay? And I'm just gonna section that hair up, okay? I'm gonna use my comb. I'm gonna tap that hair in there and I'm just gonna break up some of those cutting lines, okay? Just point cutting, okay? And that's just softening up the hair cutter, right? Again, I'll show you in slow motion there. I'm gonna move the hair across to the side. I'm gonna comb it down, okay? I can see a couple of my inconsistencies. All right, just gonna tap and point cut. Okay, and that's just softening from what we've done, okay? But I'm very, very happy with my shape, okay? So, we've gone through and we've personalized on the sides, okay? There's probably a little bit of excess length here in the back that I'm unhappy with. And this is what I was saying, is I don't wanna go through, I went through classically, okay? And you can see the cutting lines in the top there. So once again, I'm just gonna take a nice section. I'm gonna work 
from over top and I'm just gonna comb that out and I'm just gonna break up that cutting line, okay? Just softening it, all right? So when I comb it, you can't really see it, okay? And I wanna show you, you can see this is the weight there from where I connected that haircut, okay? So again, I'll work on the diagonal, take a nice diagonal section, all right? And I'm just breaking up this straight line. Okay, just to create some beautiful softness, okay? Beautiful, so we've done some personalizing in the back. I'm really, really happy with how this is sitting and I'll just spin them around. Okay, you can see that soft scissor work is sitting in there, it looks great. Shape is awesome. The only thing that I'm not uh, too happy with at the moment is just that the top is a little bit heavy and that's because I lift, left it disconnected. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna work to the front now, okay? I'm gonna work with a little bit of point cutting and so all I'm gonna do is work to the front, and as you can see, like I can already see how this hair is sitting. It's sitting beautifully, okay? So there's some nice shape coming up here, but just the top is a little heavy and a little long. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple sections, okay? And all I'm going to do is just chip at those ends, just removing a little bit of weight. Okay, I'm gonna rest that back. Okay, I'm gonna take this last section. Okay, same thing, just tiny removing a little bit of weight, okay? And again, beautiful. Sitting really nice, really happy with that, okay? So we're gonna move on to a little clipper work now. Okay, perfect, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and we're gonna clean around the ears. We're gonna put the hook in and we're probably gonna taper the back a little bit nicer, okay? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt the head and again, we're gonna come through with our trimmer or our detailer and just clean around those ears. and we're slowly just gonna come through here. We're not gonna aggressively comb this down because we don't wanna go into the hairline, all right? We're just gonna match it. Okay, beautiful. So. We're really happy with this scissor cut. It's looking fantastic as I comb it each direction. The only thing that I don't love is this messiness throughout the back. So what we might do is we're just gonna put in a very subtle taper, okay? We don't have to do anything too aggressive. It's still a bit of a classic haircut, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with our number three. I'm gonna open that and I'm just gonna come underneath my scissor work. Okay, and I'm gonna tilt his head down, get him to look at the floor, please. Okay, and I'm just gonna start my taper, okay? As you can see, you're gonna see a weight line in here. We might, we might use some scissor over comb to blend that, okay? All right, so my three's open. I'm just gonna slowly work down, okay? Just in those taper areas. Okay, just to give that clean, professional image. Okay, and if I notice not enough is coming off, it means I need to go to a shorter guard, okay? So that was my number three. I'm now gonna move to my number two open. Okay, I'm gonna close my number two now, just coming underneath it. Okay, and as you can see, this hair is growing not down, it's growing to the side. So I might have to tilt his head and come at it from the direction that it's growing, similar to this side. Okay, and I'm just slowly working my way down my guards, okay? So that was my number two. I'm gonna work to my one and a half now. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, you can see that softness is slowly coming out. Now I'm gonna work down to my 0.5 guard.
Okay, and then I'm going to take my guard right off. Beautiful. Nice clean taper. And now we're just going to work with a little scissor over comb. Beautiful. So we've worked on some of our clipper work. Now I'm just going to refine old school some scissor over comb. Always move the hair to the light. Okay, ask the client to tilt his head down. And what I'm looking for is dark spots, okay? Anything that I feel like um, my clipper might affect uh, too aggressively, I'm just going through and just slightly uh, addressing it with the scissor over comb, okay? Sometimes the scissor over comb is more analog, okay? It's softer, okay? And each tool has its own purpose, right? Beautiful, really happy with that. Gonna clean them up here. The last couple details, I'm just gonna be working with a little clipper work just to soften up those hooks again. Okay, if you want, you can also line up the front Nothing too aggressive, all right? And then again, just to go over, just to make sure, okay, I've got all that nice clean area around the ear. And what I do on one side, I'll do on the other. Once again, just touching up on that hook, okay? Spin them around. Again, nothing too aggressive. Okay, I'm not going too far in on the hairline. And again, just cleaning up around the ear. Anything that I might have missed. Now the last thing that we're going to be working on is styling. We've done a nice blow dry, but I'm still going to do a finishing product, okay? The reason being is I didn't put something too heavy in there for this reason. If we put something in there that's going to cake the hair, it's going to be harder to finish, okay? So what I usually do is I start with a wet product, okay? That's like my cement, that's what holds it. Now I'm going to start with something to finish, okay? Now I'm going to show you how I finish a haircut. So last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my L'Oreal uh, Techniart Air Fix. It's a great light hold hairspray, all right? And I'm just going to use my blow dryer and I'm going to move the hair okay with the blow dryer but I'm gonna spray my hairspray so check this out okay I'm gonna take the heat down nice cold air and I'm just going to move the hair with my dryer and just lightly spray the hair you can see all that movement I'm not too direct awesome beautiful styling okay I'm gonna match it to the other side once again you can see my nozzle is off I want something a little bit more explosive, less concentrated. Okay, and then I'm just gonna bring the client's head down. I'm just gonna hit it with some air again. Beautiful, all right. Now the last thing I'm gonna do after I've put my hairspray in, as I'm just gonna go through with my wide tooth comb and I'm just going to adjust it and just bring out all that texture. Okay, I'm not playing with it too much, but I'm just making a little piecey, okay? So this is the funnest part about cutting hair is styling it, all right? And it's the funnest part as well, as I said in early videos, it's amazing to make someone feel great about themselves, okay? Right? And I'm really happy with that, all right? So, let's just do a quick recap. Perfect guys, so we just did an amazing classic scissor cut, all right? Something that's easily attainable at home if you just follow step by step. But what I wanna do is I wanna give you guys a quick recap, all right? So we worked with our scissors on the diagonal, okay? We didn't work on the horizontal because that might've built up too much weight, okay? And we didn't work on the vertical because that might've removed too much weight, all right? So we worked on the diagonal, which believe it or not, can either create weight or reduce weight, all right? What we did is we built weight throughout the parietal, but we reduced weight throughout the nape, okay? So what we did is we worked on the diagonal all the way through, 
in those sections all the way into the back into this area, okay? What we did on one side, we also did on the other side, okay? The only thing I want you to remember is when we were working on the right side, if I'm right-handed, my fingers were to the ceiling, okay? While I worked on the left side on my cross graduation, my fingers were pointing to the floor, okay? So from there, what we did, okay, as we went through, we found the natural parting and we just classically connected the top to the sides. But if you remember, we left that little triangular section out on the front, okay, because we wanted to cut that dry. As you can see, I'm quite happy with the length in the front and where it's even sitting is not even close to the apex, okay, or the top of the head. It's actually sitting totally beautifully, okay? So we went through, we did a classic connection. Remember, we did the center part, uh, and then we removed that triangular section, brought everything down, and on the diagonal, again, just connected that into our cross graduation, okay? We then went through, we blow dried, we did a little clipper work around the ears, we did a beautiful taper in the back, just something soft, natural, okay, nothing too aggressive, and then we went through and we personalized. We did some point cutting in the back and some point cutting through the front, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This is a very achievable, easy, classic haircut that you will see behind the chair almost 75 to 85% of the time, okay? Once again, I hope you enjoyed it. Any problems, please go back through the video step by step, listen, focus, and enjoy.